Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar reminding you to mind your decisions. Start with the rectangle whose sides are 4 and 8. Draw a semicircle along the longer side of the rectangle and now connect a diagonal of the rectangle. What is the area of this shape shown in red? I thank Xavier in Shanghai and everyone who emailed me this problem. This had gone viral in China on Weibo. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try and when you're ready keep watching the video for a solution. So how can we solve for the area of this red shape? We'll solve it using the following equation. The area of the red shape is equal to the area of this right triangle minus the area of this green shape minus the area of this circular segment. So let's solve for the area of each of these shapes. The right triangle is relatively straightforward. The area is its base times its height all over 2. So we take 4 times 8 and divide it by 2 to get 16. So now let's solve for the area of this green shape. How can we do that? Well, let's focus on the following equation. The area of this green shape will be the area of this square minus the area of this circular sector. So let's solve for the area of each of these shapes. Well, the square has a side length of 4, so its area will be 16. The other shape is a quarter circle with the radius of 4. Its area will be 0.25 multiplied by pi multiplied by 4 squared. This simplifies to be 4 pi. So this green shape has an area that's equal to 16 minus 4 pi. So now let's simplify some of the results we've already established. We'll take the area of the right triangle and subtract the area of this green shape to get 16 minus the quantity 16 minus 4 pi. This simplifies to be 4 pi. All that remains is to solve for the area of this circular segment. How can we do that? This is the most complicated part of the problem. This area will be equal to the area of this circular sector minus the area of this isosceles triangle. In order to solve for each of these shapes, we're going to need to know the central angle. So let's label this angle as theta. This angle will also be equal to theta because this is an isosceles triangle. Notice the sides opposite these angles are each radii of this circular sector. So this means the central angle of this circular sector is equal to pi minus 2 theta. So let's put in these dimensions for the circular sector. We can solve for the area of the circular sector. It'll be 4 squared over 2 multiplied by this central angle. Now the area of the isosceles triangle can be solved by considering the dimensions and using the formula 4 squared over 2 multiplied by the sine of the angle in between. So now we need to solve for this angle. Well let's focus on this right triangle. Theta will be equal to the inverse tangent of 4 over 8 which is also equal to the inverse tangent of 0.5. So now let's simplify the area of this isosceles triangle. Sine of pi minus 2 theta is equal to the sine of 2 theta. We'll then use the double angle formula, and we can simplify it as follows. So we now need to know the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. In order to do that, let's consider this right triangle. We'll solve for the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem, and then we can directly solve for the sine and the cosine of this angle theta. We multiply those together, and it simplifies to be 0.4. So we substitute that in, and we can solve for the area of this isosceles triangle. It'll be equal to 6.4. We can then use theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 0.5 to solve for the area of this circular sector. We're going to need to substitute that in to this 2 theta. We now simplify this formula, and it all ends up being the following. So now we take 4 pi and we subtract the area of this circular segment. And that'll be the area of this red shape. So we're going to do some algebra and we simplify it. And we get the answer of 16 multiplied by the inverse tangent of 0.5 plus 6.4 minus 4 pi 
and that's approximately equal to 1.252. So that's one way that we can solve this problem. There's another way you could have approached it as well. Let's put in a coordinate system and consider solving this using calculus. This point is equal to 4, 0, and this point is equal to 0, 4. The semicircle will have the following equation, and the diagonal will have the equation y is equal to x over 2. So now we can set up two integrals to solve for the area. Notice the first area will be the area of a right triangle going up to x is equal to 1.6, and then the rest will be this curve shape going from 1.6 to 4. So we end up that the area is equal to the sum of these two integrals. Now the first integral will be the area of a right triangle. So we can solve for this using the area of a right triangle, and that'll simplify quite nicely. So we don't have to calculate this integral. We can just put in the area of 0.64 as this first integral. So how do we solve the rest of this equation? Well, let's focus on this integral. We'll split it up into two different integrals. The first integral is trivial to calculate. The second integral we will ultimately solve using a trigonometric substitution. But first, let's do one more simplification. Let's write u is equal to x minus 4, so the integral becomes the following. We now need to do a trigonometric substitution. So we're going to say u is equal to 4 multiplied by the sine of theta. So then du is equal to 4 times the cosine of theta d theta. We substitute this in, and we change the limits of integration, and then it'll be pretty straightforward to calculate this. This simplifies to be 8 times the inverse sine of 0.6 plus 3.84. So finally, we now substitute this in and we simplify so that we get the area is equal to 6.4 minus 8 times the inverse sine of 0.6. And this is also equal to the exact same answer, which is approximately 1.252. Now you might notice something interesting. This is one form of our answer using integrals. And this was the other form we derived using trigonometry. How are they equal to each other? Here's a fantastic proof by Nestor Abad. Start out with a right triangle whose legs are 1 and 2. Let this angle equal alpha so that alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of 0.5. Now reflect this triangle along the longer side. Now solve for the hypotenuse of this right triangle and it will be equal to 5 divided by the square root of 5. Let's drop an altitude along this triangle to the other hypotenuse. This angle over here will be equal to 0.5 pi minus 2 alpha. Furthermore, we can solve for the altitude, and it will be equal to 4 divided by the square root of 5. You can solve for this because you know the area of the entire triangle is 2, and you know that the base of this altitude is 5 divided by the square root of 5, so you can then solve for the length of the altitude. We can then solve for the leg in this right triangle as 3 divided by the square root of 5 by the Pythagorean theorem. So now in this right triangle, we have a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. This means 0.5 pi minus 2 alpha is equal to the inverse sine of 0.6. We multiply both sides by negative 8 and substitute in for alpha to get the exact equation that we need. And this will show the equivalence of the two different solutions. It's a pretty neat problem. Thanks for watching. These math videos, available for free on YouTube, build confidence for students and inspire mathematical discovery for viewers around the world. They have over 100 million views and the channel has over 1 million subscribers. Please subscribe for free to get the newest videos and email me a puzzle or math topic, presh at mindyourdecisions.com. If you so choose, you can check out my merchandise on Teespring. You can check out my books listed in the video description and you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support.